All right, it's been 22 movies, more than 10 years in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is not a place I love spending time, but they say this is the end game, the final Avengers movie. Owen, what'd you think? It is really the story about how the Avengers, over the course of three hours, battle to come together. It's so hard for us now as a culture to come together, and that's the fantasy that this movie presents, and I think uh, I really don't see how it could have been much better. Back up, like this is your, you like this more than the the uh, other installment of Avengers? Uh, uh, what's this called, Infinity War? Or? I think that Infinity War and Endgame actually do work together as so they're one, kind of one big movie. movie. I, don't, I don't know which one I would say is better. Here's where I would draw the line. I think because Endgame is so well done, there's a temptation for people to just, they want to say, best MCU movie ever. The reason that I think that Endgame isn't the best MCU movie ever or something like that is that it is saddled with a time travel plot. Time travel plots never make sense, but the good time travel movies convince you that they almost do. This movie is smart enough to reference Back to the Future in kind of a cheeky way and sort of imply, oh well, we're kind of almost ahead of where that movie was at. But when you watch Back to the Future, you really are sucked into the illusion that this is exactly how time travel would work if you could go back in time. Yeah, like whereas here it's almost like the joke is, you've seen all these time travel movies, it's like, we'll, we'll play a few funny gags, but otherwise don't get caught up in the logic of it. You know, it's like, one thing that they are not going to do is they, they establish that you cannot go back in time to change the future. So you cannot go back and unsnap the universe. So, and yet uh, that's exactly what they're doing. In, in a different, they're sort of creating this elaborate time heist workaround. And for me, it's like the, I just saw this coming. And the reason I hate, hate uh, the first movie, Infinity War, is because it sets up a cliffhanger that can only be solved through this kind of malarkey. There is also something to be said for the Monster 22 installment uh, epic uh, universe that they have created that all speak to each other and kind of interlock in a way that I guess they've designed in here payoffs to things that they set up. For, well, it's not so much that they set up, but they left kind of like loose threads that can kind of be revisited. Yes, you almost feel like, you know, that thing you see in scenes about making movies where the director has all the index cards pinned to the <laughs> wall. You really feel that watching this movie, that they have worked this all out kind of like a flow chart. The whole notion that this is going down the time travel path is, you know, a real frustration. I guess if you kind of buy into that, though, I mean, this movie is a ride. And one of the things that we've sort of discovered along the way, like one of my least favorite but most popular movies in this series, Thor Ragnarok, illustrated how fun it is when you pair Thor and Hulk and the personality clash there. Here you get Thor and Rocket go off to one you know, strand of time. I mean, there are these kind of interesting chemistry combinations. And I realized that one of the things that they did is as they wiped out half of the universe, they kept the six original Avengers. So in a way, it's kind of like we've got the team from the first Avengers movies back in this film. I think the news out of Infinity War and Endgame is that the Russo brothers, they really have become like the Howard Hawks of superhero movies because they are such good directors and yet their filmmaking doesn't have the visionary quality that Christopher Nolan brought to The Dark Knight. They're kind of invisible masters just blending the comedy and the action and the storytelling and the celebration of superhero machismo what I would call the Howard Hawks element. I don't want to overstate that, but I mean, you, you've overstated it. Well, no, but I'll tell you why I brought that up. <laughs> Howard Hawks at the time, if we went back to the 40s, you know, before film critics were celebrating filmmakers like these, these people were thought of as craftsmen, as journeymen. And the Russo brothers bring a humanity to every scene where watching a movie that really works moment to moment. You know, for me, one of the things that is maybe kept me on the sidelines of a lot of these movies is I don't really understand what super movie, superhero movies are about in the sense of, yes, there's the fantasy of being able to fly or, or, you know, do a lot of these kind of crazy things. That's mostly just spectacle and kind of action, you know, kind of nonsense for me. But uh, 
you know, I'm really looking for kind of like what the human thing is behind it. So I often prefer the standalone films where, right. like I love the first Iron Man film, I adore the first Doctor Strange, where we're really discovering how these kind of jerks are transformed by responsibility, by duty, by the call to heroism, by this kind of gift that really it comes with the, the kind of obligation to use it for the greater good. All these things are interesting to me, but when you start pairing them up, I lose that. And in, in this movie, to its supreme credit, I think really revisits the almost existential aspect of being a superhero. What superhero movies are about, in a funny way, is vulnerability. And I think that that applies to Endgame. We've been living with these characters, not just for a decade, but you know, in the larger culture, for most of a century. And even though a number of them have changed identities within the comics, in a sense, Endgame is saying goodbye to this original world of white men dominated superheroes. And it's saying, look at the world that's coming. You know, but like to like Brie Larson's point, I'm not sure this isn't moving fast enough. Like one of my favorite heroes uh, in the Avengers world is Submariner, who is an Asian character, and it's like, where is he in this world? Why aren't, like there's the moment that played the best in the film is when there's, uh, you know, sort of like a, a group photo of all the female heroes gathered into one shot, and you realize like, oh, we've gotten to a point where Marvel has given us more than half a dozen women, but why, like, what do they do? Like, where, like, you know, where is their kind of like big moment? And every character gets a moment. Sometimes it's half a minute, sometimes it's a full scene. But it's like even Captain Marvel here is, you know, someone who just had a big film and is, you know, has some key things that she does here, but feels like such a marginal character in the way that they treat her. I think the ultimate achievement of Endgame as a movie, but the ultimate question it raises about all these superhero movies is, um, what do we think about watching a movie within a universe? Because that's the appeal, but the potential problem with it always is that there's not that much at stake in any one film, because the end of that movie isn't really the end, it's just the end of another little piece in a universe. These movies are like great parlor tricks that create such an illusion of mattering that by the end of this movie, I really was convinced that it did matter and that this universe mattered. I will say that there are some pretty nice character moments. It was sort of news to me that we were supposed to cry during them. That's something that kind of like uh, seems to have gathered you steam didn't? after the after the film. Although I I do like that there's like closure between certain characters and. You know, there's a dramatic reason why they're doing that if certain people are going to be kind of shown the, the exit permanently, question mark. But uh, I will say that, like, you know, for a movie that's called Endgame, this did not feel like it had the sort of master design of the Harry Potter series, of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And, uh, and I know that this is like, a, you know, an Endgame dot, 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 question mark. Right. I don't agree with you. I think it was actually more satisfying in the end than the Harry Potter series. Which Lord you of, don't like, and Lord of the Rings uh, you don't like, uh, well, just for the record. The Lord of the Rings this series, is my, like, you know, work, it works for what it is, um, but that was only three films. Uh, 22 films is a little more unwieldy, but they really did bring it together by the end, and now there's going to be another whole universe.